Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Quantum Astrologer, wanting to talk to you about the astrological events of July 2017. Okay, so let's talk about something that already happened. There's a lot I want to talk about this month um, that has to do with Mars and Pluto and Uranus, and um, which is no good way to say that planet. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start with Mars is in the sign of Cancer, right? Um, Mars has a two-year orbit, by the way, so it goes through a sign about every two and a half months. So Mars will be moving into Leo right around, I didn't write that down, sorry, um, around the 20th, 21st of July. So we've got it in Cancer and Leo, and partly what's going on is that Mars is going to be kind of tracking with the Sun. Um, and that can, I mean, that's great in a lot of ways, that Mars is about, you know, getting things done, being direct, clear. Um, when it's in the sign of cancer, it can be about clearing out emotional issues, um, clearing out your house, um, you know, making changes to things that feel sort of stuck because um, cancer can be rhythms and patterns, things that feel comfortable, and Mars is like, move it out, you know. Um, go out of your comfort zone or create new comfort zones that are a little more exciting, you know. And then when it moves into Leo, um, there's a sense of celebrating that freedom that you've created. But also, Mars can be feeling angry at family, at your own self, um, you know, emotional eating or something, because Cancer rules eating and taking care of yourself, um, or even feeling restless, um, not sleeping well, things like that can be um, when Mars is connecting to the Sun and Cancer, because um, that idea of rhythms that cancer represents like biorhythms and so sleeping waking appetite things like that menstrual cycles so there can be a little bit of irritation in those areas and then when um when mars goes into leo it can be you know the ego can get inflamed so people can be uh, my way and anyways in whatever sign it is mars conjuncting the sun can have that kind of double-edged sword but um we also want to be able to say what is the good angle of those um, planets and signs combining. What kind of started out the beginning of the month is that Mars opposed Pluto. So Mars in Cancer, Pluto in Capricorn. Now Pluto has a 300 year orbit, so it just goes really slow going through whatever sign it's doing. Um, but a Mars opposing Pluto, and this already happened like the first few days of July, but it kind of started out the month kind of with, it's almost like squeezing the, 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 or lancing a boil and the pus is going out. It's like Ugh, you know, whatever you want to get rid of, but things can really come to the surface again in emotional relationships, family relationships, even work stuff because Pluto's bringing in the element of power and money and things like that. Um, Pluto also is kind of like Mars's big brother. So um, when we discovered Pluto, Aries and Scorpio used to be with Mars, and then Scorpio sort of got assigned to Pluto as a higher octave of Mars. So um, they have this co-connection, and when they're opposing, it can be you know, like the power struggles or frustrating with your, frustrated with yourself about things you're not overcoming and impatient, but then hopefully enough to say, and I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna do to make it happen. And you're sensing the frustration of this way and then finding a new way to accomplish your goals. And that can be part of the sun moving into closer connection to um, Mars itself. So, what we want to talk about is um, going into the full moon we're having on um, the 8th and 9th. I'm doing this on the 5th. Um, so a new moon, excuse me, a full moon is always sun-opposed moon, right? So it's always a little bit of tension, as you know, with a full moon, because um, the moon is your inner world and the sun's your outer world, so they're kind of at opposition. Um, but also, because Mars is there near the sun, it's like a more oomph. You know, and then opposite there with the moon, we've got Pluto. So the moon will be in Capricorn with Pluto. So it kind of reinforces that Mars-Pluto opposition we had directly um, in the first few days of the month. So it's like, oh, here we are again with this. So it's like, okay, knowing like what you already went through there about what the issues were, how can you commit to a plan of action about changing these patterns? Um, and a lot of it can do with meditation because Pluto's about deep stuff. So how do you get deep in there? If it's 
you know, therapy, if it's heart to heart talks with people, if it's um, you know, deep promises to yourself, but the sense needing to be of observation about what needs to come out and like why Pluto can bring this great image of like why it happens, the causational factor, whether it's karmic from the lifetime or some emotional pattern you have that pushes your own button, someone else's button, something like that. So it can be a very rich time of, because it's the full moon, drawing something to a close, like, aha, I've got the answer about why this happens. And willing to face it can be part of a positive opposition like that, you know? So that's on um, the 8th, 9th of the month. Um, then we go into, let's see, how do I want to go next? Um, oh yeah, okay. Then, so now we're kind of leaving Pluto behind because we're moving now toward Uranus. Um, so now we're going to have the moon. Okay, let's talk about Mars first. Mars will then make a square to Uranus. So instead of opposing Pluto, which is in Capricorn, Mars and Cancer will square Uranus and Aries. Now, this is kind of tricky because, you know, Mars is anger and direction and go, and, and Uranus can be kind of all over the place and chaotic and everything, right? So when Mars squares Uranus, people can be angry for seemingly no reason or just explode about stuff. And so keeping in mind there's people going through the Saturn, I mean, excuse me, the Mars-Pluto opposition and the full moon with the Mars-Pluto hanging there that haven't looked inside or they do they did and they feel they're powerless over whatever's going on in their life. And then when you get to the Mars square Uranus, which is like the um, 16th, 17th, 18th of the month, people can be explosive because they haven't dealt with stuff. Or even it, within a relationship, that not just within themselves, but within a relationship and people haven't been speaking up, there can be explosions. And it's like, wait, what does this have to do with maybe something happened a few weeks ago that was a... Um, a key to all of this, you know, because if it wasn't addressed or confronted, it's like, it's right there, you know, with the square, the, the uh, Mars, you're in a square. And then pretty much right after, so we've got Mars doing that 16th, 17th, 18th, and then the sun, because again, they're traveling together, now the sun squares Uranus, it's like, okay, we've got to face these things and trying to contain the R, you know, it's like, all right, like even say with a Mars Pluto opposition, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm on this path, I made this com commitment to myself, and then you fall short of it. Um, watching out for being overly self punishing, or other people who say they're trying to change and then they have a stumble, you know, just to kind of say, well, okay, this person's struggling, or um, give them the benefit of the doubt, um, maybe not uh, confronting right in that moment, but maybe bringing it up later. Or um, is there a better way we can work on this pattern together or something like that? But usually you don't want to go into it. So maybe waiting to like the 21st at least when that squares. And so if you bring it up to people, then it can feel attacking and people can be much more um, kind of loose cannons at that time. So and even with yourself, like um, trying to hold off on that judgment and seeing, you know, hey, um, I did well for a few weeks and now I'm seeing this was a little trigger and now I'm aware of a trigger, you know? Um, so kind of working that way with yourself. A lot of this would probably be with family things because cancer being that and, and your own inner kind of stuff. Um, and really, and this maybe goes for everything, of course, but the more you're looking at your own pattern, it's like, wow, there's a lot of results coming over here in the relationships sort of indirectly by you're working on yourself and claiming your own stuff in a gentle way with yourself and continuing onward can bring a lot of results where you didn't even have to deal with the other person. It just sort of unfolded, you know what I mean? Um, so when you're taking care of your side of the street, it's like that person starts cleaning up their stuff because they're seeing you're not in that God, thing with them anymore. And then they can kind of relax and then take care of what they need to take care of internally. So that would be kind of the difficult task is kind of bite your tongue during that Mars and Uranus stuff and the Sun Uranus stuff. Then we're going to go into, um, let's see, let me talk about the new moon. Um, let's see, okay. So in July 23rd, we have new moon going into uh, it's going to be in Leo. So the Mars has gone into the Mars went into Leo um, right before on the, the 21st or so. And um, then the, so it's the sun and moon. Oops, sorry. The sun, moon, and Mars, boom, all together in Leo. 
And um, that can be, again, a new moon is just generally like, yeah, we'll start new things, whatever. But that Mars is like, yes, Mars is about new beginnings as well. So it's a wonderful time to be beginning new projects or it's a work thing or, you know, feeling like the relationships can be renewed because you feel renewed, you know, if you're getting through that bumpy stuff earlier in the month. But, but the trick is too, that again, when Mars is connected to the moon in any way, it can be edgy because the moon's emotions and Mars is, wow, like right now, or, you know, unforgiving or harsh or something. So trying to be encouraging with yourself and, you know, guiding and, and saying, yeah, we're going there, you know, we're doing this, and here we go, as opposed to the attack. And so that's kind of the key to the whole month is not attacking yourself or people that are trying to work on stuff, you know, and holding your tongue when it feels like, oh, I just want to say this right now. It's like, whew, let me go into meditation or take a breath and, and talk, talk about these prominent points when it doesn't feel so urgent. So you're still discussing the things, but not when there's an edge to it, you know? So, um, so that was the 23rd of the month. Then one of the things that's nice at the at very late in July, what, I didn't write the dates down, are these, sorry, I gotta, oh, there it is, the 24th, <laughs> the glasses. Um, so Venus and Gemini, opposing Saturn. Saturn's in Sagittarius right now, will be for the rest of the year. But the Venus opposing Saturn, it's interesting because that can sometimes be, people don't like that transit sometimes. I mean, it's a very quick transit, only lasts a few days. This is happening around the 24th, like right after we come out of that new moon. But it kind of is grounding. Um, Venus can hum, when Venus is connecting to Saturn, it can be humbly taking stock of relationships, sort of, um, you know, it's budgeting your time, budgeting your money, sort of budgeting your emotions. And so it's the ability to observe and um, from a still point, it's not super emotional. You know, Venus, you want to, you want, oh, the, the emotions flowing, you know, I love you kind of thing. And the Saturn can hold that back and be sort of cold, like in someone's chart, it can be a little difficult or in a combination sinistry chart but when it's doing that in the sky after you've had all of this mars uranus pluto blah, you know it's like whew, being for that still point and see how much you know how valuable your relationships are how valuable you are to yourself how much progress you're making and really evaluating um from a realistic standpoint and um and also that could be having a friend who you know, is watching you from the outside, who's not involved in all your emotional stuff, to say, look how much progress you're making. Even if it was a little, this was a solid piece of progress, you know? Um, so that is nice that we're kind of, the ground. it's almost like a um, lightning rod or something where it grounds all that energy, you know, that's going everywhere. It's like, oh, this is a safe place to be. So bring it down into a steady point. So, and that can also be a time too, um, when you get into that last week of July, maybe be taking notes throughout the month about relationship things and then maybe say, hey, let's, let's talk at the end of the month about what we've learned about ourselves and our reactions and um, trigger points and whatever, um, and be able to have a calm discussion about what other additional steps to take to achieve these goals together or within yourself. And maybe like suspending judgment till that time, till you have clarity. So. So that's July. Um, you know, it doesn't it's not all bad. I don't want to sound like I'm showing you what how to avoid the potholes, but you know, Mars and the Sun is also like it's fun, it's playful, so it's great to have that during the summer months. Um, you know, so there's also that fun side, and again, getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things and um, just connecting with new people. A lot of that can be fun when the sun is with um, with Mars as it is. So just watching out for like the, the dips. And the, again, the potholes in it, but it's still a whole lot of fun area to play in. So anyways, if you would like a session with me, please contact me at um, alunamichaels.com or my cell is 248-583-1663 for texts or calls. And um, I will see you next month. And bye-bye for now.